Start the Map Tour app, go to App Inventor, and start a brand new project. Call it something like Map Tour. Set up your screen and put in a title. Then come down here and find the Maps drawer and pull out a map component. This is a new component built on OpenStreetMaps and it's very interactive. Let's make the width fill parent and the height around 50% of the screen. Notice this map is centered at MIT. It gets this from the latitude and longitude in this property center from string. You can put in any latitude and longitude here and the map will go to that location. One website that can help you with this is one called latlong.net. If you go to this site and type in your town or a landmark and hit find, it'll give you its latitude and longitude. Um, down here in the map, you can highlight it in exact format that you need it with a comma in the middle and right click to copy and then go back in here and paste it in. When you hit enter, the map now will zoom over to the new location. Here we are in New York and the Statue of Liberty. Let's add a marker. So the marker marks a certain location on the map and you can set all kinds of different properties here. Um, one thing you want to do is check off enable info box. This pops up a little box describing the marker and it has a title down here. So let's type in Statue of Liberty. And you can even put in more information in the description property if you want. And notice the latitude and the longitude of the marker. It's here as well. So let's try this now. If I click on the marker, it'll pop up a little info box and show me the title. Let's add a second marker. So this will be the second destination in our map tour. So for this one, I'm going to go to Mexico to Chichen Itza and grab its latitude and longitude. Here's its latitude and I'm going to stick that in the markers latitude property and then go back and grab the longitude. Keep these tabs open because we're going to need these latitudes and longitudes later on in the code as well. And here's the longitude. When I hit enter, the marker disappears because it's zoomed over to Mexico. So we need another way to get to this destination and all the destinations in our map tour. If you come back to the user interface drawer, we're going to be using a list picker component. The list picker looks like a button but um, it's a little bit different. Let's call this list picker destinations. When you click on it, it shows the user a list of choices. You can either set up these choices in the elements from string property here, separated by commas, or you can do it in the code. We'll do it in the code. One more thing we need here is a web viewer. The web viewer lets you go to any web page. And what we're going to do is go to Wikipedia and open up the web page for these landmarks in our map tour. So now we're ready to go to the blocks editor. So first thing we need to do is when they click on the destinations list picker button, it should show the list of destinations in our map tour. Um, and so the user can pick one. So to do this, we have to, we have to set up a data structure called a list. There is a list drawer here where you can create an empty list or you can make a list. We're going to make a list of all of our destinations. If you hit the blue mutator button, you can put in as many items in your list as you want. Um, I would suggest at least three destinations in your tour. I'm going to leave it at two for the interest of time here. Notice that this plugs into something. What it needs to plug into is a variable. So let's grab a variable and let's call it destinations. We've used variables before as a simple um, data abstraction, but here's a slightly more complex one. Instead of the variable being just a single value, we have a list of values. It's a stronger data abstraction. So in our list, we want to put the, the destinations in our tour, Statue of Liberty and Chichen Itza. There we go. And now we can set the list picker 
to show these destinations. So if you go down to the list picker, remember there's an elements property. There's two elements prop properties. The first one takes a list. That's the one we want. Um, but we first need an event handler, actually. So if you scroll back up, the list picker is a lot slightly different from the button. It has two different event handlers here to use before picking and after picking. So usually in the before picking, what you do is set up your list. So let's do that. So we want to set up the elements to, and we can just give it our destinations list. Let's try it and see what happens. So now when I click on the list picker, it shows the two destinations that it got from this list. When I pick one of these, it'll call the after picking event handler, but because it's empty right now, nothing happens. So what do we want to happen? Well, when they pick a destination from the list, we want the map to be centered to that location. So we want to move to that location. Um, but remember the map works with latitudes and longitudes. So really we need another list that has latitudes and longitudes. So right click to duplicate this one and let's call our second list destinations lat long. So this one's going to be a parallel list to the first. That means the first item here, Statue of Liberty, will match with the first latitude and longitude in the second list. And the second item up here will match with the second latitude and longitude and so on. So you got to make sure you keep them in order so everything works right. They need to be parallel. Lists are indexed, so they're numbered. Um, the index means it's number. So this is item number one, and this is item number two. They're numbered starting from one. So go back to those tabs with lat long and grab those latitude and longitudes again. And this one is for Statue of Liberty. And this one is for Chichen Itza. Make sure you grab it without the um, parentheses. Okay, so we've set up our two data abstractions up here. Um, so what we want to do is when they pick an item from the list, is we want to go to the map and use that center from string property. And then pick the right list element here um, to go to that that item on the list. Okay, so how do we know what the user picks? Remember, they're going to pick either Statue of Liberty or Chichen Itza. Well, if you go back to the list picker, there are two selection properties. This first one, list picker dot selection, gets you the text they selected. So did they select Statue of Liberty or did they select Chichen Itza for, off the list? The second one, selection index, returns the number of the item that they picked. So did they pick the first item in the list or did they pick the second item in the list? We can use this index to get the corresponding latitude and longitude in the second list. So if you go back to the list um, drawer, there's a very important block called select in here. And this selects an item from the list based on the index, based on its number on the list. So we can simply put list picker dot selection index in here and give it our second list destinations lat long um, and let's see how this works now so when i click on destinations now first it'll call the before picking and set up the elements to be this first list destinations when i click on the second item in the list that returns number two as the index here, and it asks you to select the number two item on the destinations lat long list. So that's the Chichen Itza latitude and longitude, and then it centers the map on that latitude and longitude. So we've zoomed over to Mexico. It works. So one last thing we want to do is the web viewer down here. We want to pick the right page for it. Um, so the web viewer has a procedure called call go to URL right here. And you can give it a text block where you type in any web page. 
For example, you could type in the Wikipedia page. But notice what happens when we search for something in Wikipedia if we want to go to a particular page. So I've typed in Statue of Liberty. It goes to a base URL plus what I'm searching for, Statue of Liberty. So try some different searches and you will see that the base URL always remains the same, this part, which I'll copy. And then you can add the destination name to it. You can join that together. This is the API of Wikipedia. API stands for Application Programming Interface. This is how programs can talk to each other or communicate. A lot of web services provide APIs so that you can connect your program to them and um, grab data or, or whatever they do. So they have a certain set of protocols that you have to follow. The Wikipedia one is that you have this base web address that you can add something to to get to the right web page. So we want to put the, the base URL into this text block, but we want to join that together. So grab a join block with the destination that the user picks um, from the first list here. Um, so if they pick Statue of Liberty, it will go to the Statue of Liberty page. But notice also what happens is that even though I, I search for Statue of Liberty without any with spaces in here, it put in underscores in here. Um, now the web viewers usually, and most browsers and web viewers, are smart enough to just translate this and Wikipedia will figure it out. But on some devices, you might find that you actually have to replace the spaces with underscores. So let's do that too, but try this first because this might work in your device. But if you need to replace it, there is a replace block under text. And you can add some text blocks to it where you're, you're replacing any spaces with underscores. So the selection before we feed it in here we want to replace any spaces. And remember, this is an empty string, so you actually do have to put your cursor in and type in a space, any spaces with underscores. And that should work. Let's try it. It will go to that location and show the Wikipedia page for that location. This app also shows some extensions you can build. So for example, you can build another list picker that changes the view. This is aerial view. Some of these views don't work for international locations or depending on your device. Or you could add a My Location button that zooms over to your own location using GPS.